going to ignore the fact that my hair seems to have a mind of its own. My hair chronicles continue, although now I seem to have the opposite problem, which is it's like overly sort of voluminous and fluffy, whereas before I was dealing with a lot of buildup. So let's just like move on past this. This is a work in progress. <laughs> Today we're here to talk about the March Beauty Heroes box featuring Siam C's. So the hero product this month is the Yen Heal and Hydrate Toner. And the sidekick is, I believe, a new release from the brand called the Morning Delight All-in-One Morning Cleanser. Siam C's, first of all, it reminds me, or I like always get it mixed up in my head with the brand Okoko. I have heard very good things about both brands. For some reason they seem sort of similar to me. Let me know if you feel that way too. I don't know why I think that. Siam C's as a brand I feel has gotten a lot of love in the beauty community and it just was a brand I had no experience with so I always love new brand discoveries given that I've tried so much so it's really fun for me to try new things. Similar last month with Fit Glow I was just like so excited to try something new. The founder of the brand is a woman named Supadra. The brand has this artisanal Southeast Asian influence running through it and when I was reading uh, like some of the ingredient decks I was like I have never heard of those ingredients before so entirely new brand to me entirely new uh, formulation perspective and I think it's a really exciting discovery also interestingly actually hang on I meant to go get these before I started filming all right I just had to go grab my empty products bag which you can see I need to do one of these soon and into my current skincare cabinet which I just did a video on in case you missed it okay Beauty Heroes is actually psychic, I think, because I've been finishing up a whole bunch of toners. I have three of them are completely done, and this one is has a piddly amount left in it. I also have a pretty much dead toner at work, the Demamiel Dewy Face Mist, I think it's called. So this is Moon Anna Rose, Hannah's Daughter Mineral Mist, Stark Petrichor, and Marie Veronique Christina Holy Hypotonic five toners I have finished up seemingly all at once. Absolutely impeccable timing. I did also pick up the Fit Glow C Toning Mist. A lot of people have been asking me about this. Too soon to tell. Uh, it smells like apple juice, oddly, but I like it so far. And then I also just bought the Kahina Toning Mist for my work office. But anyway, but I just brought that up to say that I've really been needing new toners. So it was very, very exciting for me to see this in the box. This is actually the first toner that Beauty Heroes has ever featured as a hero product. Jeannie tested the whole range and I believe she tested a very early version of the Yen Heal and Hydrate, or not an early version, but it had like just been released, I think. And within a week of using it, she told Supadra that she thought that it was a hero product. So here we are nine months later. And the Beauty Heroes community is getting to try it. Um, the Morning Delight Cleanser, I believe, is the newest release from the range, and it's a pretty small range. I'll tell you what else uh, is in it. At least I'll tell you what else is carried on Beauty Heroes. So there is a beauty balm, a serum, herbal active cleanser, I think it might be a balm cleanser, and then a purifying herbal head-to-toe mask. Prices are all sort of in line with other brands that we know and love in this space. The total value of this month's box is 105, I believe. Morning Road Rage. As always, if you are new to Beauty Heroes, I have tons of links and information down below if you'd like to learn more about the concept. Um, if you're new and looking to subscribe, you would subscribe for this month and the subsequent two months, so you pay that three month subscription fee up front. I have links down below. Yes, now let's actually talk about and review this box. Jeannie had sort of described Siam C's in her brand ambassador note to us as an independent brand with a very clear voice and perspective. And it is true, I haven't seen a lot of skincare brands that come from a Southeast Asian herbalism, sort of traditional artisanal beauty ritual perspective from that part of the world. So over 90% of the ingredients in Supadra's formulations, I guess, are indigenous ingredients. And she, apparently she relies on knowledge that's been passed down through like oral tradition and word of mouth from her grandmother or family members that also influence the formulations. The fun fact that I learned here is that Supadra used to be a competitive pool player, which I think is amazing. 
not something you hear every day. And the line was sort of born out of dealing with her own skin concerns and issues, which I think is obviously very common. She does come from a history of acne, so I think that people that do have a more acneic skin type will be very drawn to this brand. Okay, so let's talk about the Hero product. This comes in a 100ml bottle, which is what this is. It retails for $90, but it does also come in a smaller size that I think you can get on Beauty Heroes. Let's check. So the 50 ml bottle is $50. Potentially a new product category unto itself. This is not a traditional toner or hydrosol. I was sort of talking about uh, my perspective on toners in my Moon brand review because Anna Rose is actually a true toner. As I feel that we're also a wash in mists and hydrosols, there really are distinctive differences between a toning step, a, a rebalancing step, and then there's something like this which is neither but more so Jeannie described it as a souped up botanical water but really what I think it's closest to is a hybrid serum toner it's almost like a, a viscous emulsion it would be similar to something like a thinned out version of Infiore Complex de Fleur if any of you know that product or even the Honua Honua does like a watery emulsion add more water to that sort of product and that's kind of what I think this is. It's much more like that than it is like a toner like Moon Anna Rose or like Fit Glow Sea Cucumber. These are like true waters without that sort of viscosity. Although I do find that toners that are in an aloe base and if the aloe content is really high they can kind of have more viscosity to them but it's really di it's different in my opinion, to something like this. So importantly with both of these products, you do wanna make sure you're always shaking them up because uh, natural separation does occur in both of these and I have noticed that. So just make sure that you're always shaking every time you use them. This souped up botanical water combines organic aloe vera, geranium, cucumber, lavender, and chamomile hydrosols. And then here's where the interesting ingredients come in. Terminalia, chibula, Ketchup Fatima and Terminalia Bellerica. That's really embarrassing and I'm sure I butchered all of that. So there's some really interesting, I think, I don't know if those are herbs or plants or what they are. This is the ingredient list. <laughs> Clearly not a very zen morning around here. This is the ingredient list for the Yen Heal and Hydrate Toner. So if you are someone that does not like a really packed, like loaded ingredient list, like this reminds me of Tata Harper ingredient list, just a very long and chocked full, then I don't know if this would be the product for you, but if you're someone that wants to pack every step of your skincare routine with a lot of actives, then I think you'll probably love this. I'm just gonna do a close up of this because I wanna show it to you and I hate reading ingredient lists. I don't know if that focused enough for you to read any of it, but what I most wanted to demonstrate is how much is actually in this formula. I also wrote down, I am such a nerd and I take notes before I do these reviews, apparently the composition of this formula has the ability to penetrate the subdermal layers of the skin, which delivers the actives and the antioxidants. I don't exactly know what makes a formula able to penetrate subdermal layers. If you know, let me know because I'm actually very curious, but I guess the, the formulation has the ability to really deliver those actives into the skin. As far as the aroma, to me, this smells like a smoothie, like a green smoothie almost. It is quite floral, but it has this, um, it's sort of a parallel version of, yeah, it's not, it's not like, in, I was gonna say Infiore, but it's not, it's very different. I, I guess if you were to cross something like Infiore with something like Honua or something like Mahalo, I guess it's something like that. I would say the intensity of the scent is, of the sense of the products is on par with Mahalo. Mahalo is one of the first brand reviews I ever did. And if you go back and watch that video, it's like two plus years old at this point. I had a lot of issues with the scents. Um, they were so strong and it just, uh, I wasn't sure I loved them initially, but over time I really came to develop an affinity for them. My experience with these products is sort of similar. I'm a little on the fence about the scents, but 
they're just very unusual to my nose, um, but not necessarily bad. I think it's just taking me a little time to understand them. <laughs> yeah, it smells like a floral green smoothie to me. That's kind of like, that's what I think of when I put it on. I'm like, oh, this reminds me of some, some kind of smoothie I used to make with some ingredient I used to put in there. I don't know why I think that. Our brains and our olfactory senses do weird things. Okay, let me quickly tell you a little bit of the stats on the Morning Delight Cleanser and then I'll tell you more about my impressions and how I've been using these. So this little baby size, I think it's 15 mils. The full size of this is 70. And this product was inspired by Supadra's childhood memories at her I think it was at her grandmother's house of the gardens and trees after a morning rain. So that's kind of the inspiration behind this. It's meant to be a morning cleanser, morning delight, but I, I don't wash my face in the morning, so I've been using it as a second cleanse. It can also remove makeup, so you can obviously use it in the evening. It has castor seed oil, which really does help to pull stuff out, up out of the skin. Go-to cola, aspen bark, and hibiscus give sort of a gentle exfoliation and softening, and it does also have papaya enzymes in it, which are a gentle resurfacing. A lot of times, like, I will just dive into products without doing like any reading or research. I just want to experience them without any intellectual knowledge about them. And I use this without knowing that it kind of had the enzymes in it and the aspen bark and things like that. And I noticed right away, I used it as a second cleanse and when I woke up the next day, I definitely felt like I had had like a gentle exfoliation and it was definitely, it was from this. So it's it was noticeable on me that it gave like a gentle resurfacing, softening. My skin was very soft, my skin is very soft when I use this. So this is actually not something I personally would use every day. I am very wary of overdoing things on my skin and I'm very much a less is more person, which is really at odds with being someone that likes to review beauty products so there you have it I'm not someone that wants to try a zillion things and beat my skin up for the sake of reviewing them this is something I've been using like pretty sparingly I've probably used it five or six times total to me this smells like Chinese herbal medicine if any of you have ever seen an acupuncturist also like I'm gonna do a close-up of it because there's an oil but then there's almost like powdered herbs in it. So if any of you have ever seen an acupuncturist and they've prescribed you like an herbal formula to take, for some reason this product reminds me of that. It also kind of reminds me of like the beach. I don't know why. I'm sort of at the point with these products scent wise where I'm not sure it's going to be like a long-term jive with me but I'm continuing to use them to find out. One of two things can happen with it, for example with something like Ayuna when I first tried those products, I was unsure on the scent. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Now I'm obsessed, like obsessed with the scent, like in and of itself, above and beyond what the products do to my skin, obsessed with the scent. Then there are other brands, um, I'm thinking of something like Maya Chia, where the affinity does not grow, and in fact the cavern with my resonance with the product like deepens over time and I just can't use it. And I just think that this is, our noses pick up on different things in the sense, and I think some people will love the scent of these, and for other people they might be a little bit too strong. I will just have to keep you guys updated on that. Okay, let's think about what else I can tell you about my experience. I've been using Yen mostly in the evening, when my, I feel like I want to sort of pack my skin with a little bit more hydration. Perfectly fine to use in the morning, but when I use this, I like to keep other things simple and minimal. I really only like to have one step in my skincare routine that's really loaded with powerful ingredients. So if I were to use this, I would use something, other products that are very neutral. This, an eye serum, and then maybe a couple drops of a neutral face oil, like a pure argan oil, like the Kahina argan oil or the Moon argan oil, or blend of oils with no essential oils in it. I would skip an oil or a serum or even a cream that had a lot of extracts in it. That's just my preference. You certainly do not have to. It's not something that I find you can mist on your face because of the misting mechanism, so I've just been spraying into my hand and doing that method, which is fine. In fact, I have found that to be the case with this too. It's a very aggressive misting mechanism. So it's not giving a super diffused mist the way something like Josh Rosebrook Hydrating Accelerator. This has like totally diffused, like I don't know, rainbow mist or something. These are a little more aggressive and I just like, 
I, I need a gentler misting mechanism. So for ones that are not, I'll spray into my hand, which is what I've been doing with this. What else about the cleanser? I really have only used it as a second cleanse probably five or six times. It's really nice for me during the week. I like to keep my skincare exfoliation down to, I'll do like two manual exfoliations a week, kind of like a gentle midweek one, and then I'll do like a deep clean on the weekends. During the week, I'll, it just it honestly depends on how my skin is feeling. My skin has been feeling fine, and I don't like to mess with it too much when it's like that. If I have been feeling particularly greasy or something, I would use this in place of something like Linne Purify, for example. They do different things, but sort of give a somewhat similar result. Linne Purify is a little bit more dehydrating, and I say that uh, in a good way because sometimes I'll feel excessively oily and I want to get a little bit um, drawn. I need things to get a little bit more drawn out um, because of, I think that one has clays in it. It rinses completely clean. Um, I haven't tried using it for makeup removal because I'm a little unsure on the scent, so it's not really a product I want to like spend a lot of time massaging on my skin right now. It just smells like Chinese herbs to me and I think of I think of all my Chinese herbal medicine experiences. So I've been using it as a second cleanse and rinsing off and really enjoying the effect. Definitely one of the cleansers that I've tried that has the most like softening property. That's not something that I really have detected in cleansers very much. Oh, I did have the note that I felt like Yen seems to really help my skin retain moisture over time. So when I'm using this, I do feel like my skin retains hydration a little bit better. And this is something I'm very attuned to because I try a bunch of hydrating masks and they don't seem to do anything for retained hydration. Whereas when I use this, I do feel like my skin sort of retains the plumpness for a while. Yeah, I think that's really about it. I already told you about the rest of the collection. And I would love to hear your thoughts on what you think of this stuff. I just think it's really exciting to get a toner in the box. So there are some new products from Anima Mundi in the beauty store, which by the way, I've been meaning to put the coconut cream powder in my monthly favorites video since I started trying it because I really like that stuff. It's so good. And to combat the insane flu season that the United States is having, I have been taking teaspoonfuls of the turmeric. I think it's called the Curum Elixir. <clears throat> I'm gonna take some this morning actually because I'm about to go get on an airplane. Fit Glow is now carrying their detox cleanser and the sea toning mist. I was like obsessively waiting for them to stock this so that I could buy it. Uh, there's a new face serum from Osmia in the store. A unit is doing something called the Momentum Kit and Laurel Whole Plant Organics Eye Balm is now also in the store. March's Love More promotion is good. With any $125 purchase in the Beauty Hero store, you can select whether you would like to receive a full-size Line Purify Face Wash or a full-size Line Act, is it called Activate Body Wash? So these were the Co-Hero products from this past fall. I would say, I don't know which one to choose because I really, really love them both. I do have issues with the packaging of these products. I talked about it in my uh, last video, my skincare cabinet tour. Purify, actually I'm tempted to say you should get the face wash um, because if you don't have it, because it makes the best leave-on spot treatment I've potentially like ever tried and totally unexpected. I was having like crazy, I had like three cystic pimples in the span in, during the eclipse portal. My skin is thankfully like back to how I'm comfortable with it, but I have not had cystic pimples in years and I have not had that clustering of cystic pimples in, I don't know, probably like 10 years. So it was very uncharacteristic and I was like, what is happening? The spot serum I had was not working at all. I put some of the Line Purify on it one night overnight, just a huge dab of it and it totally started like bringing down the redness, drawing things out, and it s totally sped up the lifespan of these cystic pimples I had. And that's when I knew there was like, this is a great formulation for that. I do also like it as an all over, like quick midweek, if I'm feeling oily. So I think actually like now that we're sort of moving into spring and summer, that would be a, be a great one. But the Activate I love as well. It's just so nice, like on a weekend sort of Sunday, if you're doing like a full body exfoliation or if you are if you have been sick and feeling congested, like using that in the shower when all the steam and stuff is opening it up, it feels like heaven. It's They're both really, really nice. I just wish you would change the packaging because the packaging is 
really bad. Those little things get very clogged up, but the product inside is really good. And I've heard great things from other people, so I think you kind of can't go wrong with either one, to be honest. I think that's it. I always get to the end of the videos and I feel like I've hit my stride and I want to keep talking, but it's like well time to shut up. So I hope you guys enjoyed hearing this month's review. Very curious to hear what you think. I'll have to keep you guys updated over time with how I feel about these products. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will look forward to seeing you in my next video very soon.